Hi everyone, uh, my name is Abby and welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm here with Brandon from CoreOS. Hi Brandon, thank you for joining us. Can you tell me a little bit about CoreOS? Sure, so CoreOS helps companies be successful with containerization infrastructure. And we do that with a variety of things, but Kubernetes and Tectonic is one of those that I'm gonna talk about here. Awesome, we hear a lot I think about how like little startups and little companies are working with some con with containers, and it's maybe they have a couple, or they have they have ten, or they have fifteen. What are some challenges uh, with working with containers that are, are making companies turn to things like CoreOS to help them out? Yeah, um, so there's a bunch of different things. First, like people turn to containers to help with deployment automation, to help with scaling, and really make it easier for teams to manage applications. So that's why like they're choosing containers. And then what we help them with in our products are things like automation for upgrades and recovery and backup, monitoring, and then what we'll be talking about here, which is tying it to their existing identity services. So in general, I think a lot more work goes into running containers than people think, because you see a lot of posts that are like, well, I built, I switched everything over to, to containers this weekend and asked me how I did it. And, it's, and it ends up being that they run, they run one container, they run two. But when you're running a really big infrastructure, maybe there's some other challenges that goes into to automating that. Um, you mentioned, though, that you were focusing on helping them manage identity. Can you tell me a little bit about why I need something to help manage my identities? Yeah, so let's just first walk through how Kubernetes yeah. works really quick. So um, a user on their laptop or, um, or any other system. That's a good laptop, by the way. It looks old. <laughs> really nice. I, I like the matrix screen. So. <laughs> The, um, the user will go on their laptop, use command line tools or websites um, to, to talk to the Kubernetes API. Um, generally what they'll say is run this container and I want maybe five copies. And then what will go on after that is that the systems, they're called worker systems, but these worker systems then connect to um, the ELB that all of these Kubernetes APIs are talking to and they'll get commands. I need you to run this one container, these two containers. So the system roughly works like that. Now the important thing is you won't, don't want anyone on the internet to be deploying applications on your infrastructure. That gets really expensive. So <laughs> Why not? <laughs> so you want to tie it to some sort of identity service. And generally, uh, large organizations have LDAP or SAML or whatever. And so we have a piece of software called Tectonic Identity that ties people's existing identity services into the Kubernetes identity services. You mentioned tying the systems together. So it sounds like, and I mentioned earlier that we hear a lot from startups, but if I'm a bigger enterprise, I must have a lot of existing architecture that I have to tie in with my new stuff and still get the benefits. So is, is that something that you guys are, are helping with, is kind of building in between the new stuff and the old stuff? Yeah, so generally what will happen is that in these identity services, again, SAML or LDAP, or whatever, they'll have modeled their teams. So you may have different product teams or different roles in the organization, like administrator roles. And so what we do is we help to take those identities, like the user's name and probably their group. So maybe it's Alice and she's an administrator and maybe Owen and he's a developer on a single product. And we bring those into Kubernetes world where we can start to give people write access or read access to different parts of the system. And that's the kind of bridge that we're building there. So it sounds like I can, I can kind of get the best of both worlds, right? So I can manage my Kubernetes cluster without really having to work directly with Kubernetes. And then I can bring my existing architecture over so I can still get kind of the benefits of having my new container-based architecture, but I can still use the old stuff that I needed to for compliance or where I've already modeled my teams. Exactly, and so we also do things for compliance like build audit logging into the system. So you have all these identities and you want to know what actions did Alice take and which actions did uh, Owen take inside of the system and actually run those through your log aggregation stack or whatever. Does this mean that my employer watches everything that I do on my, <laughs> on my computer? If you're spending <laughs> money on cloud resources, probably should be. <laughs> Maybe for April Fools last year I changed everyone's password, so now you can tell. So I can kind of I can add all those users and I can manage them through you and then I can also audit what the users are doing. Yep, and that's all what we do sort of through the tectonic governance services is those sorts of things. So what happens though if I don't have an existing kind of identity directory to, to bring to the table? Can I work through that with you guys also? Yeah, so that's very common. When you have teams that are usually under about 50, they won't have a LDAP or SAML service existing. And so with tectonic identity, you can kind of have just 
plain usernames and passwords. And then if all those components are down, we kind of have the like zombie apocalypse, break the glass <laughs> identity service, which is a static set of um, public and private key credentials. So if all this stuff goes away, you can still get into your cluster and debug things, um, which you know can happen. Uh, all software kind of has bugs. Well, if it's not called the zombie apocalypse service, I feel like we've really missed a big <laughs> opportunity. Uh, <laughs> this has been really interesting. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, it sounds like kind of like I can either bring my own stuff to the table or I can connect both pieces through you guys. Uh, thanks, Brandon, for joining us. Thanks for watching. This is my architecture.